platform. Hi and welcome to the Sula Verbal Cars keynote. How are we running Sula? Well, we have a small core team, continuous integration architecture, that handles the Sula backend and the infrastructure. And uh, we support to up to around 111 developers who uh, consist of many smaller teams, uh, and they have at least one DevOps who can add nodes, pipelines, and repositories. And whenever a new team wants to use Sula, continuous integration architecture trains uh, one of these people to um, become a de DevOps. So why are we using Zoom? Well, one of our de developers said this in a really good way, and he believes that premium cars need premium tools, and Zoom is a premium tool. And it forces us to have a green master, and in that way, we uh, increase our development speed. Uh, for example, the one-pedal drive of Polestar 2 was built with Zoom. Zoom version 3, uh, why do we use that? Well, to handle development in an NVIDIA central computer, where there are many teams with different garrets, and we have the introduction of cloud nodes, we really need Zoom version 3. And here we rely on cross-project dependencies, which is a feature of Zoom. And as mentioned many times before, the most important feature of Zool is the gating system. Do not merge broken code. So our longest Zool project has had a green master since April 2018, while other non-Zool teams on our company had long periods of broken master tracks and even turned off CI in periods. Uh, there are three other features that we really love with Zool, and one is speculative merge. And speculative merge uh, makes the merging of new changes into master dependent on the build capacity, basically, because you test everything in parallel. You also have the prioritized queue system, and this is very important when there is a deadline and there is a long queue. At least then you start the jobs that are most prioritized and you keep the customers happy. Um, CI job configuration together with software and repository is uh, an essential tool. So here are some of the software components that we currently build with Zool. We have some autonomous drive components, a decision manager and so forth. These are high level uh, AD functions. Uh, and then we have propulsion vehicle control, which actually controls the car's drivability. We have the dependability of the same functions, which is uh, the fallback strategies. We have thermal control, control the cooling systems. We have the vehicle state functions, which controls the accelerations and vehicle uh, states. Uh, and we also have um, uh, brake planning, because in an electric car, you can brake both with the electric engine and the friction brakes. And then we have some uh, components controlling the doors, the seats, the climate, the steering, and the central onboard diagnostic core, which actually keeps track of the state of the components of the car. And also the central core, uh, low power CPU based technology. And that's developed in Rust. Yeah, and this team really likes to preach about how well suited Rust is for automotive development since it's, it tries to be safe by default. In this picture, you see two typical pipelines uh, that we have uh, running Zool. And the dots here are automatic jobs, and the capacitators of the lines are manual steps. In, in the middle here, on the left side, you can see a pipeline that we have when we generate the C code with a target link and Simulink. And we have a lot of link jobs here because we handle security class software. And uh, that first box describes the check pipelines and uh, Garrett code review, plus one plus two, leads you and starts the um, gate pipeline. And here we do system tests uh, and we compile targets. And our releases are triggered by uh, creating Git tags and the, that kind of change logs and so forth. And in this picture, you can see some of the tools we use in this pipeline. And we rely on, for instance, Silver and Test Weaver to create a, 
uh, sealed components that are uh, not uh, bound to the target. And you can also see some of the compilers we use in this environment. So what does our future of SUL look like? Well, currently we're trying to look into how to handle scalability and move this to Kubernetes. Since uh, all of our developers are located here in Gothenburg, uh, it means that uh, during the night when we're not really running anything, we're still paying for all our services. And uh, we also have a need to be able to nest virtualization. And this is not really possible to do in uh, AWS currently. Uh, and we believe we might be able to do this in Azure. And we also have uh, developers who are using GitLab, so we need to be able to start uh, listening to those repositories. Thanks you for listening. Thank you.